you were meaning to get in touch with me, but then I heard you were dead. And I also heard that you were a king and various other things. But the fact is, you and I are not the sort people understand. We're the sort people fear. Now I got the information that I need, and now I have to break your neck. It's just the way it is. I'm not, I'm just a messenger. Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. Marvel recently announced that it effectively canceled a number of movies and TV shows that it had been working on the past couple of years. And one of the biggest ones was Eternals 2. They've already developed a lot of the story material. We had a pretty good idea for what they were going to do. So we'll break it all down. You might have heard about Kevin Feige's original larger plans for the Eternals and the way they were going to fit in the MCU going forward through Avengers 5 and Avengers 6. They were originally meant to replace the X-Men. But this was all before Robert Downey Jr. signed a new contract to return as his Doctor Doom. They turned Avengers 5 King Dynasty into the Doomsday storyline before the Fox Disney buyout deal happened. Like, originally, Kevin Feige and Marvel's plans were very, very different. Thanos, for instance, was a big part of that, too. That's why you probably heard Josh Brolin talking about how Marvel was going to bring him back the last couple of years. You could not live with your own failure. Where did that bring you? Back to me. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. We're just starting to hear about all the movies and shows that Marvel has canceled. They're pretty quiet about that most of the time. Usually you just never hear them reference stuff ever again. Like, hey, what happened with all those post credit scenes that went nowhere? How come you didn't pay those off? Because their movies, their sequels got canceled. The Eternals are probably the biggest casualty of all this chaos the last couple of years. I'm actually kind of bummed that we're not getting more of that Thanos backstory that we were promised. Because if you're not a big comic book reader, during the movie they hype up Thanos' backstory. He is an Eternal from the planet Titan, like these other Eternals here. So Eternals 2 was going to get into that backstory more. That's the whole reason why they hyped up the Star Fox relationship in the Eternals post credit scene. So we'll explain what was supposed to happen in Eternals 2, what their new plan is for those characters like Kit Harington's Black Knight, who isn't an Eternal, but also had a bunch of projects that he was supposed to show up in next, cancelled or outright changed. Cersei, Star Fox, the Celestials, who are some of the most powerful cosmic beings in the Marvel Universe, originally Marvel had big, big plans for them. Even before Marvel pivoted to Kang the Conqueror a couple years ago after he blew up in the Loki series, people, oh, people love this Jonathan Majors character, this Kang character. Why don't we use him as our big villain? That was actually a relatively recent change at Marvel behind the scenes when they were trying to figure out what they were going to do for Avengers 5. It wasn't like they knew they were going to do Kang Dynasty when Endgame was coming out. Like, it took them time to figure that out. Since then, it's changed multiple times. Like, now we have Doomsday instead of Kang Dynasty. So long before Kang became a big thing at Marvel, it was going to be the Celestials who became the big villains of Avengers 5 and Avengers 6. Rewind to a couple years ago, you might remember right after The Eternals was released, we actually heard directly from Patton Oswalt, who plays Pip the Troll, that they were actively working on Eternals 2, and it was meant to continue all the storylines that they set up in the first movie. So, Patton, there, there's, there's word out there that you might be part, speaking of the metaverse, part of the Marvel Universe. I'm, Along with Harry Styles. Oh, well, th yeah, there's a, ha Harry Styles and I are in a little post credit sequence in The Eternals. Uh, we play, um, I play Pip the Troll. He plays Star Fox, right. um, Thanos' brother. It's actually, Al, it's interesting, in early issues of the comic, see, Star Fox originally, <laughs> when he first appeared, no, 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 he was... Here we go. Come back, come back, come back, come back, come back, come back to me, come back to me. They have announced there's going to be an Eternal sequel. Chloe Zhao is going to um, direct it, so awesome. hopefully there will be more adventures of uh, uh, Star Fox and Pip. You have to keep in mind that that clip of him was from back during the pandemic era a couple years ago. Like, this is an old clip, and the Eternals movie itself came out during the peak of the pandemic, before a lot of theaters had reopened, when people around the world were still really hesitant about going back out to movie theaters for anything but, like, the highest order of things like Spider-Man No Way Home. During the pandemic era, that was kind of like the exception to the rule. People were like, you know, who cares about that? We're going to go see Spider-Man No Way Home. There's one simple thing. You can do to make this whole virus go away. Stop seeing Spider-Man. <laughs> but during those years when things were really bad, most movies tanked at the box office just because people did not want to go to the actual movies. So the Eternals movie financially did very poorly for Marvel. That was the first sign of trouble. The quickest way to get canceled at Marvel is to not make money. 
Marvel's whole plan in general for releasing movies, TV shows, their whole Disney Plus strategy was totally different during that time too. It was basically a free for all there. Kevin Feige's Disney overlords infamously had told Marvel to make as many movies and shows as possible for Disney Plus. We saw what that led to. Multiverse thing. It's not great. It's just been miss after miss after miss. All kinds of quality control issues. Probably the most chaotic example of that is Secret Invasion. But after Kevin Feige pumps the brakes, he fires like a whole bunch of people at Marvel. Like all the people that worked on Secret Invasion mostly got fired. That should tell you about the chaos behind the scenes at Marvel. They clean house, reduce their output to a trickle. That's why Deadpool and Wolverine is their only movie they released this year in 2024 as of me posting this video. Originally, there were going to be four movies this year and at least like four to five TV shows, just to give you an idea for how much stuff originally they planned on releasing. Eternals 2 originally would have been released within a couple years of the first movie before Avengers Secret Wars, also which had originally been scheduled to release back to back with Avengers 5 in 2025. Remember way back at Comic-Con a couple years ago, they said they were releasing two Avengers movies in the same year and it was going to be next year. Talk about peak content era. You're going to have to quit your jobs and quit school just to have time to go out and see all this stuff that they were releasing. So when they were still working on Eternals 2, this is what was going to actually happen in the movie. The biggest storyline was Ereshim the Judge showing up at the end of the first movie after they killed Tiamat, that dead celestial in the Indian Ocean. They've just been sitting there for the last couple years in the MCU. It's turned into a big meme. They barely mentioned it. She-Hulk is the only time that they've actually directly referenced it since it actually showed up. They finally decided to pay that plot off during the new version of Captain America 4 Brave New World. They're going to say that adamantium grows on the celestial. So that's where adamantium comes from in the MCU. That movie is coming out in February. We'll get a much bigger trailer later this year that'll spell out more of the actual story of the movie and how adamantium figures into it. Just because that now leads in a completely different direction for Marvel, a very X-Men Wolverine kind of direction. That's all part of Marvel's new plan, like the brand new plan, post-cleaning house. Before all this, they would have just paid off that dead Celestial storyline in Eternals 2. Ereshim the Judge shows up to hold the Eternals to task for failing their mission to aid in the birth of the Celestial. That's the only reason they were sent to Earth, to make sure the Celestial would be born. They refer to that as the emergence. During the movie, they revealed Celestials created new Celestials by planting seeds inside worlds that fed on the life force of beings from the planet until eventually it matured and would break its way out of each planet like a chicken hatching from an egg. Everybody knows what happens to eggs when chickens hatch out of them. R.I.P. Earth. Over the thousands of years the Eternals lived on Earth, they grew to care about humans, so they stopped the emergence, but in doing so, they killed one of their gods, essentially. Like, the Celestials are gods to them. The Celestial hosts got pissed. Ereshim the Judge said that they would then vote on whether or not Earth was worthy of being spared at the cost of the dead Celestial. And if they judged them, thus the name Ereshim the Judge, to be unworthy, then the Celestial host would return to destroy Earth. There was a little bit of backstory relating to this during Guardians of the Galaxy 1 when they were talking about the history of the Infinity Stones. You actually see Eson the Searcher using the Power Stone to destroy a world. It was them judging a world, basically wiping the slate clean and moving on to the next world. The Celestials were threatening that the same thing was going to happen to Earth. All the while this is happening, they're planting more Celestial seeds in other worlds to create more new Celestials. They changed the Celestials from the comics a little bit for the movie. In the movie, they explained the life cycle of a Celestial is that once it grows and destroys its host planet, it uses its innate Celestial energy, its cosmic energy. You see the Eternals using small portions of that during the movie. That's where all their powers come from because they are basically Celestial robots. The Celestials use that energy in their bodies to create new galaxies, starting with the creation of a new sun. So when they do that, they basically expend all their energy, their life force. They die like that Celestial dies, and that's why there's such a big cycle of them needing to create more Celestials so that they can create more galaxies. Ereshim the Judge said that if they stopped doing that, the Marvel Universe would stop expanding, begin contracting, and you'd eventually see the heat death of the universe, but it would take billions of years for that to happen. So part of the idea is that it's kind of a lie from the Celestials, like the Celestials are lying about their true purpose and why they need to do all these things. In the post credit scene, Star Fox, Thanos' brother from Titan, played by Harry Styles, reveals that he's another Prime Eternal like Cersei and Ajax. He's got the special Celestial core that enables him to communicate with them directly. 
he's going to help Druig, Thena, and Makari find the Celestial Forge, this place that's the Celestial's home base, and save their friends and stop the Celestials from coming back to destroy the Earth. That movie would have released around Avengers 5, so the idea is because they wanted to turn the Celestials into the big villains of Avengers 5, Avengers 6, and beyond, is that they probably would have failed to stop the Celestials at the end of Eternals 2, then the Celestials would have threatened to actually come back to Earth, and it would have spun up into a much bigger Avengers crossover movie with the Eternals. All the heroes, all hands on deck, a bunch of giant Celestials just showed up threatening to completely destroy the planet, again. The next big storyline they would have paid off was Thanos' connection with Star Fox. So Harry Styles, bit of a stunt casting. I'm not a big fan of his acting, but they would have explained why he's Thanos' brother in the MCU in the rest of Thanos' backstory. Because they also reveal that the Eternals are just celestial robots, which should not be capable of biological reproduction. All the MCU story behind all these characters is vastly different. In the comics, the Eternals are not robots. They can have children the normal way. But in the MCU, they never reference Thanos being a robot. He also ages visibly, meaning that he's probably not a celestial robot or he doesn't look like a robot. But then how could he be an Eternal from Titan if he's not a celestial robot? So there are a lot of logic problems that they were going to try and solve in Eternals 2. The answer in the comics is that Thanos' mother and father, Alars and Suisan, who get a shout out from Red Skull during Avengers Infinity War, they use the quantum bands of Quasar to conceive Star Fox and Thanos so that she can actually give birth to them. So it just took a huge power-up to make that possible. Thanos was born with the deviant gene, which is why he's an eternal, but he looks like a deviant, like why he has the purple nutsack chin. And you can actually go read about this in the Thanos comic book. It gets into his full backstory as a child growing up on Titan, how he begins his relationship with the cosmic entity Death, and why he eventually comes to the conclusion that he needs to snap half of all life in the universe with the Infinity Gauntlet. But remember, they changed a lot of that backstory in the MCU. What they probably would have done is hand wave over a little bit of the technicalities, but explain that Thanos' parents found a way to actually conceive him in Star Fox. He was still born just looking different. It's also why Josh Brolin kept saying for years after Endgame that Marvel was going to bring him back as Thanos in new projects. This Eternals 2 would have been one of those times. We have seen them bring Thanos back during the What If series a couple times, but that's animation. This would have been live action. There is some new Thanos stuff they announced at D23. They're doing a version of King Thanos. Josh Brolin will come back to do voiceover for that. That's meant to be an alternate universe storyline for the Disney parks. We'll see if that version shows up in Secret Wars, though. That'd be a good opportunity so they can also pay off this moment from the comics where God Emperor Doom rips Thanos' skeleton out of his body to show how powerful he is. Just imagine Robert Downey Jr.'s Doctor Doom doing that during Secret Wars. That would be amazing. They're probably going to have him do that to a version of the Council of Kangs to get rid of their Kang storyline at the beginning of Avengers 5. Like, how do you deal with this if we're not going to be doing Kang as a big character anymore? Well, you just have your brand new villain wipe the floor with the old villain. R.I.P. to the Council of Kangs. The next big storyline they would have originally followed up on was Kit Harington's Black Knight in the Ebony Blade. The post credit scene with the Black Knight was meant to set up a couple of things, though, not just Eternals 2. Right after this moment, he and the Ebony Blade were meant to show up in the new Mahershal Ali Blade movie. That's why it's also the first cameo scene from Mahershal Ali's Blade in the MCU. Cut to three years later, we all know what happened with that Wesley Snipes Blade now joking about the lack of a new Blade movie in Deadpool and Wolverine. There's only been one Blade. There's only ever going to be one Blade. That movie would have essentially turned him into Black Knight Vampire Hunter. Blade was meant to lead a darker supernatural team up in the MCU like Midnight Sun style. That still might happen, but they have to release the Blade movie first, and who knows when that's going to happen. So I'm not expecting a Midnight Suns project till after Secret Wars at the rate that they're going. Kid Harrington's Black Knight was also supposed to show up in Avengers 5 and Avengers 6 with Cersei. They were both on the Avengers team in the comics for a while. Those plans have since been canceled. Marvel's whole plan for the next two Avengers movies changed dramatically, which I talked about earlier in this video. Like, this is all long before the Russos agreed to come back, Robert Downey Jr. agreed to come back. And here's where we get to some of the bigger changes behind the scenes at Marvel. Originally, when Kevin Feige started developing the Eternals movie back around the time Captain America Civil War was coming out in theaters, that's how early they started developing the Eternals. 
At the time, Disney had not yet started to consider buying Fox. That whole process didn't start till a couple years later, so legally, Kevin Feige couldn't make any plans involving the X-Men. So when they started developing the Eternals, originally, they were meant to be the replacement in the MCU for the X-Men, because Kevin Feige assumed at the time they'd never get those characters back. You have to remember, this is way back around 2015-2016. And Marvel wanted to pivot to totally new characters and concepts after Avengers Endgame. We saw a little bit of that play out during Marvel Phase 4. You cannot get any more different from Avengers, the first three phases in the Infinity Saga, than the Eternals. They're like a super weird group, just like the Inhumans. And a lot of you who have been following the development of all the Marvel movies for a long time might remember that even before they thought to do the Eternals, that Kevin Feige fought a war with Ike Perlmutter at Marvel over the Inhumans. You have to remember around 2014, 2015, Ike Perlmutter is still Kevin Feige's boss. They want to find their replacement for the X-Men to compete with the Fox X-Men movies, and Ike Perlmutter wanted that to be the Inhumans. Kevin Feige famously hated the idea, but because he wasn't the boss of Marvel at the time, like Kevin Feige didn't actually control that at the time, he was forced to put an Inhumans movie into development, which is why during this Marvel Phase 3 announcement back at Comic-Con, I think it was 2014, 2015, you see that they originally planned on releasing an Inhumans movie between Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame. Zoom and Enhance, you also notice that the Captain America Serpent Society joke is still up here on the board too. This was actually from their Comic-Con panel that year. This was actually meant to be Civil War. But they are doing the Serpent Society during Captain America 4, so the joke's on us now. Giancarlo Esposito is playing Seth Volker, aka Sidewinder. He'll be the creator, the leader of the Serpent Society during the movie. So way back between 2014, even like up to 2016, the Inhumans, the Eternals are like both of Marvel's plans for replacing the X-Men in the MCU. Everybody remembers what happened after that though. Ike Perlmutter famously got fired, like basically removed from his position. Kevin Feige gained full control over Marvel Studios, like the movie, the TV stuff, with a few references bringing them back. Like we saw a brief cameo scene during Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness. So they're not completely gone, but like they're not planning on making an Inhumans movie anytime soon. So it wasn't like Kevin Feige completely threw them in the trash bin, like he's willing to bring them back for cameos. Then a couple years later, the Fox-Disney buyout deal did wind up going through. They were able to change their long-term plans and eventually pivot to the X-Men like they want to now during Marvel Phase 7, like become the mutant saga after Secret Wars. Part of the reason, though, that it's taken so long for that to happen, like why they didn't do it right after Avengers Endgame, is because they'd already started spending all this money in developing the Eternals, so they had to release that movie anyway, and there were a lot of legal contractual issues preventing them from recasting everyone right away, like right after the deal went through, around the time Avengers Endgame came out. So that's why it's taken them so long to do more X-Men stuff inside the MCU. Kevin Feige's kind of built that into his current plan and used sort of what's happening right now to give all those Fox Marvel characters their own version of Avengers Endgame, Spider-Man No Way Home, like X-Men No Way Home or X-Men Endgame. Like we're not quite ready to do X-Men yet on a creative or a legal, like a contractual level. So we'll do a little bit of cameo work, thus the opportunity to bring back Chris Evans as his Johnny Storm from Fantastic Four. Kevin Feige says it typically takes them about five years to develop a good movie. So overarching plans like really big stuff, Avengers movies, for instance, take even longer than that. That's why things have seemed so chaotic the last several years and why it seems like their plans have changed so much. They're way less organized than you normally think they would, being such a large corporation that makes so much money. But everyone, pour one out for the Eternals. I'm sure we'll see a couple of those characters come back in cameo scenes, but obviously their overarching plans for what's going to happen with everything going forward have changed dramatically. So everybody let me know in the comments, how do you want them to pay off the Eternals characters going forward in like the Kid Harrington Black Knight character? Like I said, there's still some chances that they could bring that character back through like Moon Knight Season 2 or like a Midnight Suns project. So there's still places where like the real big, really cool characters can also come back. Whatever they wind up announcing, of course I will do videos about it. There's a bunch of big stuff coming up though. We just got a brand new Fantastic Four teaser trailer video, so click here for my video for that. And click here to learn about all the Deadpool and Wolverine alternate endings, deleted scenes, and deleted storylines. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.